For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. There is uh, a much larger context, like you yourself said, in, the, in which the trade and the tech assaults are taking place. And there's also the context of, at a global level, the US trying to build a, some kind of a consensus. Now, this is happening mm -hmm. at multiple levels, of course. We saw the most recent instances when there was the reference to China being responsible for the coronavirus itself and the disease and the kind of slurs that were being thrown by the president, the US president and the administration. We saw it in global forums where, again, there was an attempt to sort of conduct a probe into the disease itself. At a global level right now, do you see that the US has been actually able to gather allies for this, especially among its European allies, or has this become more and more a losing cause? That's a really good question. Um, I think that it's 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 still kind of hard to say uh, since we are very much in the middle of of the pandemic now. But I, uh, <clears throat> you know, in in sort of material terms, I think that the you know very much uncontrolled uh, and disastrous uh, you know in both in both sort of human and economic terms spread of COVID nineteen that we've seen in the U S. right uh, and the wide public awareness of this globally. You know, the fact that that uh, uh, the U.S. is is on almost every you know country's uh, uh, um, sort of no travel list at the moment, right? right. Uh, is 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 testament to the fact that 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 on balance, I think I think the pandemic has absolutely weakened uh, the United States' uh, credibility. Certainly, certainly, it's it's soft power apparatus. Um, and that the approach of at least the current administration uh, has absolutely been, uh, you know, to to paper over and and you know occlude and indeed like like falsify and exacerbate the scale mm -hmm. of of uh, the pandemic in the United States, while uh, uh, you know trying with 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 you know ever greater desperation um, to to pin the blame on China to sort of rewrite. Mm -hmm. Uh, the narrative of the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, right. in order to, to make China out to be at, at best a negligent and at worst an actively malicious actor. Um, and I, you know, my sense, my sense is that it's not really taking, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, it's very hard comparing, you know, the, just, just the visible, uh, uh, you know, indicators of, of the situation now with regard to COVID-19 in China versus the United States uh, to make the claim <clears throat> that, that China as the very first country hit by it, um, which, which had to you know, go through all the stages of, of, of identifying what was going on, of, of uh, you know, sequencing uh, the virus, of uh, you know, establishing its human transmissibility, of essentially you know, uh, coming up with some kind of um, some, some kind of protocol exactly for for uh, for controlling its spread and 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 doing so under the circumstances quite successfully. Um, that that I think has just become harder and harder to deny, right? And I, uh, you know, this whole thing must be seen as well uh, in, you know, as, as you said, the, uh, the the broader context of of the U.S. painting. China for various reasons, right? Um, whether because of, you know, the fact of its increasing global reach, you know, the, uh, you know, its very foreignness, right? Um, in, in, in every sort of major respect uh, to, you know, the traditional, uh, you know, colonial or neo-colonial centers of power um, as, as this kind of uh, global threat, right? I, and and this is where you see as well, you know, the the prevalence of of conspiracy theories that that attribute, you know, the the origin of COVID nineteen, for example, to like a Chinese lab, right? Um, that that uh, uh, try to you know put all this in 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 a, in a sort of biosecurity framework that lend itself very much to uh, uh, you know anti Asian xenophobia, right? Um, to uh, um, targeting right of uh, of 
you know, people of Asian descent, particularly Chinese, uh, both for sort of, uh, you know, sort of spontaneous uh, acts of, of, of racial violence, such as we've seen in the U.S. and across the, uh, the wider world, and sort of on a more systematic level, um, you know, dovetailing with uh, this, 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 this narrative uh, that, you know, like the presence of, uh, of, of people of Asian descent uh, is ipso facto in and of itself, uh, you know, the, 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 the inclusion of, of a, a, uh, a necessarily foreign and dangerous element within uh, one's own population, right? Kind of treating the viral metaphor uh, at, at the scale of the body politic of the entire country. Right. Um, that's, that's what we're seeing operate on multiple levels. And I think it's no accident, right, that, that you know, with the, uh, this sort of epochal challenge to U.S. credibility, uh, to, you know, at least sort of the ideological foundations of, of U.S. hegemony in the world system um, that is presented by, by uh, its, its catastrophic mishandling of, of the pandemic, um, you know, we're, 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 we're seeing uh, the Trump administration in particular, you know, double down on uh, the targeting of, you know, particular Chinese researchers, right? And, and exactly. uh, indeed sort of, you know, uh, uh, academics of, of, of Chinese descent, even, even US citizens, right, uh, in the United States itself. I think there, there's a sort of a fairly broad coalition within, within you know, the, the, the Asian American community generally, uh, you know, including, including liberals uh, against uh, against the sort of naked targeting that we've seen under the Trump administration. But I think a crucial weakness of that narrative is that um, it essentially takes as a given the, uh, the prerogatives of the U.S. state. It relies in many ways on the argument that, you know, these are, uh, you know, whether Chinese nationals or, 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 or you know, U.S. citizens of Chinese descent, who, who are going to the point of, of applying for security clearances, right? Who want to contribute to the economic and the, in many cases, the military uh, betterment of, of the United States, you know, who, who, who uh, are uh, like a positive, you know, uh, who, who are making positive contributions to, to uh, you know, U.S. economic strength and, and, and military supremacy. And the essential weakness of that argument, you know, is 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 that it it ultimately relies on the same sort of uh, uh, ideological coordinates that you know form form the crux of of the entire you know xenophobic campaign being waged at a bipartisan level, you know, not just by Trump, but uh, you know, in many ways by by the Democrats as well, who you know uh, from 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 the left to the right end of, of the ideological spectrum that they encompass have completely sort of bought in to, to the narrative of, of um, you know, uh, of, of, of China like stealing jobs, right? Uh, of it, um, you know, posing a threat to, to US hegemony uh, and who's, you know, presidential nominee now, uh, Joe Biden, uh, in many ways seems to be trying to outdo uh, Trump in some aspects of his xenophobia, right? right. Uh, accusing him, for example, in a campaign ad of uh, imposing the travel ban on China uh, after the start of COVID-19 too late, right? Of allowing in, you know, tens of thousands of, of, right, right. of, of, of potential like spreaders, you know, in a very, very racialized way. And, and this is why I think that there is, uh, you know, absolutely a danger that, you know, if Biden wins in November, as it seems like he will, we will see uh, a continuation of, you know, this kind of aggression on multiple fronts that that you're referring to, um, but with a veneer, right, with with, exactly. with 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 a face that is much more palatable to, uh, you know, the the U.S. Uh, and its allies, right, than 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 Trump, who who was absolutely uh, willing, you know, particularly uh, for the sake of his base to alienate, uh, you know, traditional sub-imperial uh, uh, allies of the United States, right? Uh, Canada, the EU, and so on. 
And so um, we're, you know, we're in a moment now where uh, I think there have been many sort of uh, like self-inflicted injuries on on the U.S.'s credibility there that that can very easily be papered over just by a change in administration. Exactly. Um, and uh, you know, without changing any of the, the the fundamentals, which is that you know the U.S. is still the hegemonic imperial power. You know. Uh, it still occupies a dominant position, uh, thanks in particular to, to uh, you know, its outsized military budget, which is around 10 times the size of China's, right? Uh, its actual global reach, you know, where uh, it, it, you know, is, is able essentially to surround China um, uh, on sort of the Pacific side, on the southern border, and uh, in terms of its presence, of the U.S. presence in Central Asia on its western border as well, uh, with with a string of 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 you know U.S. bases and of forward deployments uh, by by naval and air forces as well you know um, and where uh, in addition to that sort of physical uh, uh, you know uh, cordon in some ways around around China it's exerting you know the same uh, uh, kind of naked aggression uh, on an economic level as well. Uh, and and I think that you know the left, globally and in, in particular in the here in the U.S. Right, this is something that we as the Chow Collective repeatedly return to. Uh, you know, we need to be clear-eyed about the fact that this is not, you know, an inter-imperial rivalry between equals. Absolutely. You know, it is. Uh, it's 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 a country uh, that you know, sort of looking at historical experience of other socialist states, right? Like the USSR uh, in particular, um, you know, has adopted a long-term strategy of, of uh, or, or, you know, a clear-eyed view of, of what it takes to actually uh, get to a position where, where it and other global South countries can actually, you know, pursue, uh, you know, an independent strategy for, for their own development, right? Uh, for building their own productive forces, but we're still in very, very, you know, very much a weak position compared to the imperial hegemon, where it's in no position to mount a frontal challenge to to, to U.S. power, and where, um, you know, the uh, uh, like the actual dynamics are still are still very much, um, you know, like unilateral uh, sort of. Uh, one directional aggression being levied against it by uh, a much stronger power that is seeking to maintain its position against, you know, manifold threats that are that are very much, uh, uh, you know, inherent to to uh, the global capitalist system as a whole. Thank you so much, Charles, for talking to us. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,